Hey guys, so today I'm going to be talking about a few concerns I have with the Windows 10 end user license agreement. This video has been requested by you in more than a few comment sections of more than a few videos on this channel, but it was going to be a video that I was going to do anyway. If you would like a maybe a bit more balanced uh, view of Windows 10, then feel free to check out a video I made a couple of days ago on this channel where I do a first impressions look at Windows 10. Now it's a first impressions look, so it's not exactly a review, it's hardly comprehensive, but it gives gives you uh, a bit of an overview of, of what to expect from the system if you're thinking about maybe upgrading. Um, but today this is very much going to be a highly critical video of Windows 10 and I've got myself here a list of bullet points which I will be going through today. I will also be putting up supplementary information on the um, you know in, in the video part of this um, simply um, to sort of aid in sort of some technical language definitions sources that kind of thing. So anyway first bullet point you can't change how and when you update your system on Windows 10. It just installs the updates as they become available. Now, Microsoft have taken uh, a significant amount of power out of the end user's hands. And interestingly enough, I have mixed feelings about this. Now, if this was a policy on any of the Linux distributions I use, uh, I would be pretty annoyed and outraged and probably sort of switch to another Linux operating system, as it were. Um, but Linux is an operating system where customizability is like a cornerstone of its overall philosophy. Windows is effectively for everyone, but it's also uh, designed for people that don't know that much about computers and don't care that much about computers. And as a result of that, taking the um, the the chore or the job of actually choosing which updates to update, when to update them, um, and to assess the stability of said updates, and to take that responsibility out of the end user's hands and put it in the hands of um, Microsoft and Windows 10 itself, is, is arguably not a bad idea because at least it keeps everyone on the same page. It means that when people provide technical support, they know or have at least have a good idea about what updates the end user has installed and things like that. So from a from a newbie point of view, I don't actually consider this to be a particularly bad policy. And if you do want to choose, you know, the sort of how your system is updated and when your system is updated, I, I might like to recommend. A distribution of Linux, really, to be honest, because you know it's it's it, it. This might come down to the line where Linux is for certain types of people and Windows is for certain other types of people. And without putting people into sort of generalizations or whatever, Windows certainly markets itself as a newbie-friendly operating system that someone should be able to just pick up and use. And um, and and whether or not you consider that to be true, this is certainly an attempt to 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 make that the case. So. Um, yeah, like I say, if this had been on any sort of operating system that I use, uh, I would actually be quite annoyed by it. And I am annoyed when I boot into my Windows 8.1 partition that seemingly every time I do it, uh, it, it requires about half an hour's worth of updates. Incredibly annoying. One of the many reasons I don't use Windows. That being said, um, my Windows 8 partition is reasonably well updated even though I hardly ever use it. So, again... I want to say this is horses for courses, but it, it's not. It, this is um, this is maybe like an effort to get everyone on the same page, and I think that that's maybe something that's probably does more 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 good than harm. I don't know. Like I understand why people are really annoyed by this, but again, if you want an operating system where you can control said things, Windows might not be it. Um, so yeah, okay, maybe not as critical as some of the other points. The advertising. The advertising now, Windows and Microsoft are really um, going to push the advertising side of things pretty strongly in this. So every Windows 10 user gets attributed like an advertising ID, and uh, a lot of information gets then attributed to that ID in the form of profiling. So the advertise uh, advertisements on maybe sort of like free but ad-supported apps and um, maybe sort of like Bing ads on various websites and whatever, become more relevant to the end user. And I know that a lot of people have varying different opinions on the the worth and the ethics surrounding this. Um, and it does seem to be something that you can't, you know, that that seems to be something that, that, that concerns people, that there are, in regards to advertising, um, you seem to be profiled quite heavily. So there's that. Um, moving on, uh, Cortana. Cortana. That's a, now Cortana is a big one. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. So Cortana is the Microsoft slash Windows 10 version of Siri um, slash Google. OK Google, I think, is the Google equivalent. So Cortana um, uses 
your and collects your personal data and they outline what um, that is in the end user license agreement it covers everything from browsing history to your calendar and it even includes speech data um, which are things like uh, nicknames and 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 sort of communicative lingo and so forth to actually learn more about you now a lot of people are say, saying that this is perhaps sort of like Microsoft Jarvis I don't know if you guys are Iron Man fans um, but this one again, this concerns me a little bit because it's a gimmick. It really is a gimmick. Um, I personally don't have a problem finding anything on the internet, right? And I don't even use the Google search engine that often. Sometimes I use it when all else fails. But start page, um, duck, duck, go. If you sort of know how they work, like searching for anything on, on the internet is kind of fine. You know, it's not a problem. And, you know, if you like name your files vaguely sensibly, searching your hard disk, again, it's not a problem. It's not even an issue. So this Cortana thing, where it, it tries to get more into you and it tries to understand you more and then gives you, what, more relevant search results and, and, and helps you navigate your system more effectively because everyone's a special little snowflake and, and, and Cortana's got to understand you to understand what the hell you're trying to do. No, you know, I think it's it's entirely superfluous. Um, and if any of you guys have actually managed to find any decent use out of Cortana, please let me know down in the comment section below. But is it really worth Cortana collecting all that data on you? You know, that's a lot of data to put in one place. And again, it's important to bear in mind, because when I talk about big data and, and data collection, we have to understand, you might trust Microsoft with your data, but what's not to say where that data is in 20, 30, 40, or 50 years' time? Microsoft could have collapsed as a company, and that data could have it could have been ended up on a, on a server that gets hacked. It could be that Microsoft gets bought out by a company that you don't trust. There could be any number of reasons, most likely completely unforeseeable ones as to what might happen to your data further on down the line. And it's a risk you're taking. There's a lot of data in one place. And if all you're giving, you know, if you're giving up that information for just what, like a gimmick, uh, you know, just some bells and whistles on your Windows 10 operating system, just so Microsoft has something new to sell you, yeah, that doesn't strike me as being a particularly wise thing to do. That's all I'm going to say about it. Um, and then tied into that, because Cortana effectively, they they also say and more as well. So it's not just things like browsing history, searching history, um, speech data, calendar events, bookmarks, all that kind of stuff. It's it's and more. It's like they take uh, you know a lot of the data is 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 system usage and things like that. Um, whether or not your screen is locked, how long, what time you're on, all this kind of stuff. It all gets factored in, and um, and it all gets linked to your advertising ID as well. Um, and it's a lot of data to have in in one place. Um, but the thing is, what ties in is is another th um, is, is the next bullet point on my list is that they reserve the right to hand over and access data pretty much at their discretion. The excuses they use are to help law enforcement and to protect um, the enforcement of their end user license agreement, which is pretty broad, really. That's a pretty broad spectrum. Um, not to mention, of course, that Cortana uses all this information sort of at will anyway. So um, again, you know, it's just a lot of your information that Microsoft seems to be using, and it seems arbitrarily, really, as well. Um, so I, I, I got to admit, like, um, in regards to, to, to my, you know, Microsoft's privacy policy is that there doesn't seem to really be one. Um, you, you know, it doesn't seem that your rights are protected here. And I guess is, this is the difference between like end user license agreements from Microsoft and like end user license agreements like the general public license where EULA's like Microsoft, Microsoft's EULA here is designed to actually take away rights from you. Whereas something like the GP, uh, GPL, the general public license, is actually designed to protect your rights. Um, it's, it's very interesting um, how these two sort of seemingly very similar um, in terms of their functionality and in terms of where you find them um, and in terms of their sort of their legal standing, but how different they are in terms of their actual um, uh, sort of context and their content. Um, okay, so the last point on here is the uh, is Wi-Fi um, Wi-Fi Sense, which which shares your Wi-Fi password to your Facebook friends. So, again, this is um, something that you can decide to use or decide not to use. But I think there is something problematic about giving Wi-Fi access to your friends so that they don't necessarily need you know your password when they're sort of around your house using their phones, tablets, laptops, whatever. 
Um, if you're a friend of, of, of this person on Facebook, then you can use their their Wi-Fi connection. And that seems a little bit weird. Now, th again, this is an optional extra. But again, I think it's walking down the road of this social media thing becoming such a part of our lives that um, that we, we may be restricting our own choices here. And what I mean by that is, um, yeah, technically, like, if you if you're really savvy with social media you can protect yourself really really well you can keep up to date on the privacy settings and your rights and you can read every single end user license agreement under the sun but at the end of the day we're all human we all make mistakes and some of those mistakes are on social media how many times have we seen like a politician or a celebrity say something really daft on twitter and then get ridiculed by millions of people as a result of it people make mistakes and mistakes aren't just limited to celebrities and public figures there everybody makes them and one day that mistake could be accepting a friend onto your facebook who then abuses your internet connection or something to that effect it's getting in deeper in in in, in integrating social media into more powerful elements of our lives social media should really at, at the end of the day be just that it should be a way of socializing it should be a way of of either making friends or communicating with friends or whatever it should be effectively recreational and the more we link social media with other stuff in our lives things that we own for example like our uh, wi-fi connection and so forth the more dangerous it gets because that way we seem to have less control our control now seems to be not you know it seems to be not solely at our discretion but the, the discretion of us and facebook or us and microsoft or the you know the the sort of the connection between them all um and again it's i know that it sounds a little bit like i'm putting my tinfoil hat on here but the truth is, all of this is listed in the end user license agreement pretty clearly. I mean, you've got to give it to Microsoft credit where it's due. Um, it willingly tells you that it will hand over your data at a moment's notice to the authorities and that it's collecting almost all the data it can on you. Like, it's not making any bones about that. I'm not sort of cryptically uh, tearing apart the end user license agreement. It's there in black and white, plain and simple text uh, that you don't even need to be a lawyer to understand. You know, they've taken out all the legalese and they've just literally said, we're going to take a lot of your information and we'll use it with Cortana and we'll use it with law enforcement and we'll use it to enforce our end user license agreement. Um, you know, they're not making any bones about it. This is all, um, you know, this is, this is what they intend to do with your data. So, you know, brownie points for honesty. Brownie points for, for making your end user license agreement reason, you know, sort of easy enough to read, um, uh, easy enough that everyone can actually understand it. It doesn't stop that very, very few people will actually read it in the first place. And that, I think, is where my concern comes from. Uh, there are privacy features that you can't actually turn off in their privacy center. So, uh, and a lot of people have accused the Microsoft 10 um, sort of privacy options of being a bit uh, sort of whitewashy and a bit... Um, of a red herring in the sense that, yeah, you can turn off a lot of um, uh, location info and stuff like that. But that, in a lot of cases, is just stopping apps accessing it. It's not stopping the sort of, say, said collection of that data. And of course, Microsoft itself and Windows 10 being uh, of proprietary components means that we never really actually know. It's very difficult to actually attain um, the information they are collecting on you and what they're doing with it because you can't sort of crack open the source code and have a look for yourself. So, um, you know, you do have to trust this. And, and, and any, you know, company with end user license agreements like this, um, you know, I can't, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to trust if I can avoid it. And I do, because I'm not going to be using Windows 10. So um, those are a few issues um, that I've got. Um, there are no doubt more, and feel free to discuss them down in the comments section below. But like I say, you know, a lot of these privacy features are actually, or a lot of these privacy concerns are somewhat avoidable, in all honesty. Not all of them, um, but some of them are. The fact of the matter is, though, is that not everyone is going to be savvy enough to navigate their way around this. And we live in an age now where computers are very, very commonplace, and um, almost everyone is, ex is, is expected to use one at some point. Um, at least here in the UK, I think for every kind of... Um, you know, like legal procedure or um, sort of communication with the government or, or whatever, you, you know, claiming benefits or um, or anything like that. I Even though there are like online uh, features to do that and like filing your tax return and all that kind of stuff, 
there are also offline equivalents. There are, you know, you your right effectively is reserved to not use a computer or not use the internet to actually conduct your uh, civic business. Um, but that being said, I can see a day when that might not necessarily be the case, where it costs an absolute fortune to keep a call centre open, but it only costs a couple of quid a month to keep a website up. So, okay, maybe a bit more for like a government website, but you can see that there be uh, there being such a cost saving that people might be ushered more and more and more to use computers uh, more now than ever before, and that there might become a point where it's actually compulsory. Um, and that being said, that's when our rights become the most become more important and there is i believe enough pressure or a lot of pressure on a lot of people to actually get computers um and learn how to use them however navigating end user license agreements and understanding how uh companies like microsoft and like google uh, access your data and what they do with it and how they make money off of it and what they do with it in the case of uh you know their, their interactions with like law enforcement and not only law enforcement of say like the nsa but of foreign governments as well um you know, this is something that a lot of people are going to struggle to navigate and a lot of people aren't going to know. And it's very easy to sort of, um, you know, sort of take the very cold stance of, well, everyone should be educated about everything. But people don't have the time. They don't have the inclination. Um, hell, um, you know, they might not even have the ability to understand all the complicated ins and outs of end user license agreements, privacy policies and all that kind of stuff. And these people have just as many rights as you or I. And Maybe it's up to people like me, like you, down there in the comment section and those of you that watch this video, to actually sort of educate and spread the word and to let people know. But I think that there does need to be some kind of responsibility on the part of um, of Microsoft to actually protect people's privacy. And uh, I know that the European Union have stepped in um, on uh, various, not only companies, but even the UK government on uh, in regards to privacy concerns as well. So we know that even by, by the standards of the European Union, our rights are being infringed to one degree or another. Um, so that's my rambling done for. I have a great deal of number of concerns, as, as I've expressed just now, in regards to the end user license agreement and privacy policy of Microsoft. And um, I don't think I'll be using it. I think what I'll be doing, if I can, is riding out my Windows 8.1 until it runs out of, until it stops being um, maintained. And then I'll probably switch to Linux completely. In fact, that being said, um, the only reason I'm keeping my Windows 8 Point one partition on, and I'm not switching it out for something like Fedora um, or Manjaro or Arch or something like that. The only reason it's about is because um, there are a number of games, new Fallout game, new Hitman game, new Deus Ex game, which um, look absolutely amazing, and I don't want to sort of risk. I like they, they ain't going to run on Wine, really. A lot of games, I you know, I, I've had a lot of success with Wine, even with steam and um and i've got uh, i've been playing uh gta vice city which runs amazingly on steam uh, on on steam on linux by the way um and um fallout new vegas as well which is a uh, i'm not gonna call it a reasonably new game but it's sort of newish um and that runs really well on um steam on linux as well uh, i use play on linux which is uh, a nice little bit of software for helping you get games to run on it as well so I got to say, uh, you know, in regards to games now, I can get pretty much everything that I want to play on Wine. Um, and a part of me is willing to wait until I can play newer games on Wine. But uh, but then again, I've got this dormant 8.1 partition, which I'll probably hang around. There's not really any point in me upgrading to Windows 10, considering how little I use my Windows partition in the first place. But um, anyway... That's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. Feel free to leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. I read every single one of them, even if I don't respond to them. And uh, until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.